47 participants. Almost half of the participants are in this workshop. Thank you for joining us and thank you too to all our reactors. Professor Emeritus Dr. Rosalinda Opreneo presented the proposed ASEC SSG diploma course. The, course. the title of the course is Social and Solidarity Economy as an Alternative Pathway to Sustainable Human Development or Basic Introduction to the Theory and Practice of Social Solidarity Economy. This is an overview of SSE as an alternative to profit-oriented mainstream economic model and as a multi-sectoral movement linking the values, principles, dimension, and goals which define it and distinguish it from other economic categories to actual practice and collective action. It comprises of 14 modules in three parts. Each module will run for three hours every week, either blended in person or pure online, depending on the condition. English will be the medium for the meantime. The last session, uh, last module, I mean, module 14 will outline the culminating session and will provide a venue for exchanging individual assessment of SSE's achievement, limitation, and potential, given the participants' current context. The course objective are focused on understanding the concept, how it works, appreciate, and adapting the knowledge. Target participants are college students, trainers, organizers of SSE organization in engaging advocacy and practice, even for government officials and researchers. To solicit, uh, solicit reaction to the proposed SEC course, as invited resource speakers. Uh, one of the speaker did not make it. Uh, and while Mr. Ibon Poirier, because of the time difference, sent us his recorded reaction to the presentation of Dr. Opreneo. After hearing the reaction of our resource speakers, the floor was open for question and answer as well as comments from the some participants. Here are the suggestion comments concerning the course guide. On the suggested audiences, this is an ASEP relevant stories about Asia could be introduced when they exist. Mrs. Stephanie commented that there are stories related to SSEs but not branded as SSE, so we can also consider that too. What exists globally needs to be explained, the UN Task Force on SSE, the International Labor Decision also uh, for impact inroad in the UN system for, for example, the United Nations Resolution and the upcoming African Union SSE Decennial 2023 to 2033 strategies. That is from Ibon, Mr. Ibon Pornier. Uh, public policies even less frequent in Asia have developed considerably. In fact, about 20 countries have SSE of social economy laws, national secretariat, national policies, etc. For SSE, the approach is the co-construction of public policies. Mr. Ibon mentioned that he has two papers concerning the question on the public policies and willing to share it as part of the reference materials. For SSE finance, we need to have more ambition. There is a need for more financial institutions, including the Asian Development Bank, to have programs adapted for SSE, SSE Economic Organization, need to access public finance as much as traditional private sector. Some things for country programs supporting businesses of all types, including SSE. The history of the movement since 1997 need to be explained and in Asia in more details. Existing knowledge on web needs to be referenced. Mm -hmm. A question of logistics is also important. That would be the period, intense or less frequent. How long will, will each session be? Will this be online? Could this become a course in the university? There is also some suggestion on the subject regarding management skills for social enterprises, uh, how to use the SSE knowledge for community works that from coming from the Ateneo de Zamboanga, elaborate more on the SSE supply chain subject, the clear role of every channel must be also included in the subject. And, there, and lastly, the 
uh, if there's a story from Australia can be refer can can be of relevance the new economic economy network of Australia has many recorded webin webinar that can be shared for uh, Comments and suggestions were given consideration and the revision were made based on the comments and suggestions from our reactors. As to when the course will be open to accepting application that will be announced soon, ASIC will send you an announcement with application form together with the proposed date and venue of the course, whether it is free or for a fee that to be decided soonest. So don't get tired of receiving emails from us because your names are all in our radar in ASIC. Okay, bye. And lastly, by opening this course, more people will know SSE and appreciate it, hoping to adapt it for a better economy. That's all. Thank you very much for giving me this chance. Thank you very much, Paul, for staying within the five minutes time period for your synthesis. So we cannot underscore how important it is to initiate education and awareness raising on SSE. And this course is an auspicious start and we hope that we will be able to roll it out within the year. Yes, and now for, thank you very much, Paul. And now for, for workshop session two, social entrepreneurship development roadmap. Our rapporteur is Trish Lim Francia, who is CEO and co-founder of Woven, which is a compassionate crafts company that works with Filipino artisans across the Philippines. So yes, um, may we call in Trish? Hello, you have the virtual floor, yes. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So um, I was in the second group. And the title of the session was Mobilizing SSE Actors for the Collective Implementation of the Philippine Social Enterprise Development Roadmap. And it was presented by Mr. Carlos Sagun, Executive Director of Bayan Innovations Group. So the purpose was to discuss the SE Roadmap and the importance of social enterprises and collaborating with different stakeholders across the Philippines and contextualizing it in the Philippine landscape of SE um, it was really apparent through a lot of research um, and a lot of interviews and FGDs that there were varying um, definitions of what a social enterprise is. And that is one of the key problems that we face here in the Philippines. Um, some of it range from social enterprises as companies with CSR to social enterprises are simply micro enterprises and they cannot be and can, they cannot grow in size that they are not profitable or that they should not earn profits so this presents a lot of um, challenges and roadblocks for us and th thus the national social enterprise development roadmap was con conceptualized the vision of this is to have a common understanding of Filipino social enterprises as organizations that, number one, have a sustainable business model, number two, pursue a social environmental mission towards the achievement of the sustainable development goals, and thirdly, to ensure majority of their benefits accrue to the social environmental mission. The mission of the Social Enterprise Development Roadmap is really to unify the ecosystem. So there are many stakeholders, uh, many, share, many people who can help in the development and growth of our SEs here in the Philippines. And it's important to unify the ecosystems and stakeholders of stakeholders in the pursuit of growing scope, size, and social environmental impact of the social enterprise sector. So to this, um, to this end, Mr. Carlos Sagun also presented the OCRPs or the objectives and key result areas um, to, to work towards. The first objective is really for the general Filipino public to know what social enterprises are. So it's really percentage awareness. Is the key result area that more people get to know the definition of what social enterprises are. Number two, for the sector interveners to have a common understanding of social enterprises and commit to the sector's development. This is so that we can um, encourage more people to collaborate and to be on the same page of what social enterprises are and what they need to be able to solve some of the social issues, social environmental issues in the world. 
Lastly, um, it's for the last objective is for the social enterprises to grow their scope, size, and social environmental impact. So Mr. Carlos Sagan also made available, uh, if you want a full uh, copy of the National Roadmap, um, he can provide the link maybe in the chat here. Um, it also outlines some of the strategies and that involves um, involving corporations or enterprises, cooperatives, NGOs, foundations, the academe, and public agencies. Uh, to this end, there will be technical working groups that uh, we will that will be progressing throughout the next weeks to determine what the shareholders or the stakeholders will be doing to support the social enterprise landscape here in the Philippines. So um, we had our first our first reactor was Mr. Rod Mark Bariga of a social enterprise called Palamigan Co. And he expressed his um, delight in having this roadmap. He said that in the country, even among the SE players themselves, there's quite a lot of misunderstanding on what a social enterprise or what a social enter what a social and entrepreneur or a social enterprise is. And it's all the more reason why bringing help towards the sector is a tougher endeavor in the country. So he's looking forward to the success of particularly the SE registry, which is one of the activities under the roadmap. And the success would be dependent on the participation of all the stakeholders. So um, a, a question was posed on how to join the technical working groups. Um, and there will be Mr. Carlos Sagun will be sending a message to all the members here of the workshop, of the discussion, uh, so that they can join it. Um, it's important to keep communication lines open among all the collaborators. And finally, we had Mr. Mark Rose. Um, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, uh, your name wrong, but we really appreciated hearing about uh, what he shared from Tim Forsman, a resource in the, in the World Bank, about a knowledge repository on immersive immersive information to create a knowledge base for sustainable communities. So it's so really to present the registry as a map to gain a better understanding of how we can access all the avail available resources. And from the point of view of the different interveners, how they can work and reach out to communities across the Philippines. So um, by then we were cut off, but that ended our discussion. And I think Mr. Carlos Sagun can send the relevant links for all those interested parties. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Trish, Dame Francia, for your very concise synthesis. So, and also for giving us an overview of the Philippine Social Enterprise Development Roadmap. And we also hope that the social enterprise conception of this roadmap will adhere to the values and principles of the social solidarity economy. Because you know that not all social enterprises are actually social solidarity economy oh, enterprises as well. Okay, now we will move to our third workshop. Um, that's Climate Change and Environment. And the rapporteur for this session is Mr. Con Onsein, who is the CEO of Foundation for Community Studies and Development. We, you have the virtual floor. Thank you, Dr. Natalie. I'll yes. let me just um, share screen. Uh, oh, okay. Here I am. Just put me to PowerPoint. All right. I think I'm now ready. We um. My name is Khan Onsin. I'm the reporter for workshop number three on climate change and environment. Um, Bola uh, from Nepal presented his presentation and we had three reactors from um, Supano from India. Marie, um, who is Australian, but has spent much time in India, um, Himalayas and Pakistan, and also Assad from Bangladesh and we had 22 participants. So the key message was that in the, the model of community-based forestry using a social solidarity value approach um, showed that 40 of the Nepal population were lifted out of poverty by being allowed to manage 30% of the natural forests and natural resources. 
Um, it also inspired the formation of self-help help groups, improved li livelihoods, communities and leadership, and um, autonomous governance structures uh, that, that were very empowering and built local leaders and capacity. Um, this was in a context where the forest was fast degrading prior to the pre-90s, despite gov government and state interventions. And now with this uh, allowing, creating laws and policies that allow the local communities to manage their own forests and natural resources, the forest has now be, uh, been regenerated. And so um, the key message of this model um, and, and the reactor's comments were the social solidarity economic um, value based community based forest creates work, um, not just work, but satisf uh, job satisfaction. It uplifts poverty. It um, is able to develop basic infrastructure. It brings people together, um, working collaboratively, strengthening social community, uh, organization and institutions and leadership, as well as strengthening culture, values, identity, um, in, and inclusive in, in nature. So the recommendation from this model that we look at, this SSE model, uh, which shares uh, uh, um, the five dimension um, areas that Dr. Ben talks about, as a mainstream, um, let me just move this further down, it is to recognize um, the S social solidarity economy, CBF, community-based forest, as a mainstream um, community, uh, as a mainstream tool to promote. In oh, sorry, something went wrong with my uh, PowerPoint here. Um, it's basically to recognize the social so solidarity uh, community-based forest as a mainstream economic model to promote rural development, sustainable environment, combat climate change, and sustainable livelihood. Number two, the obs obs observation number two, oops, sorry. Um, the SSE uh, community base force is an effective to achieve inclusive, sustainable economies, social justice, and sustainable environment. It also includes, contributes towards decent work and includes disadvantaged groups like women and um, vulnerable groups. So the recommendation under this is to put in place an enabling legal, regulatory, and fiscal framework that recognizes community managed forestry and consist, considers the social and environmental missions of community-based uh, forestry. And what is required as well is a clear legal description and inclusion of community forests and their related activities in the social enterprise sector. Oh, how, I'm sorry. I seem to have uh, got out of that somehow. Let me get back in. Uh, climate change, yes. Okay. Thirdly, the um, key message is the SSE's role in respecting human dignity, building community and fostering diversity, solidarity and respect for traditional knowledge and cultures including among indigenous and tribal peoples. Um, there were comments that sometimes the indigenous groups get left out and evicted, even with um, allowing um, local communities to manage the, the natural uh, forest resources. So a recommendation is to provide special protection of indigenous groups from being evicted and protection of their land rights. There is an overemphasis in forest protection that there's a danger of overemphasis in forest protection that excludes local community. This results in, in, in impoverishing local communities and ultimately weaken goals of conservation when local communities are no longer there to stop deforestation. So there's a need to move from forest conservation only to a social solidarity enterprises of CBF, uh, enterprises or to a green economy. So therefore, there needs to be in the recommendation an enabling fiscal incentive to develop social solidarity economy, uh, CBF enterprises in the community forest sector, not just conservation, but using um, the SSE enterprise model as a means of making it sustainable and to making it grow um, and to empower local communities to manage. 
So how do you how do we overcome these challenges of building uh, SSE in CBFs in community based forests? One is we notice that community based forests lack the human and financial capacity to start as conventional businesses. So public funds recommendation is public funds need to be used to meet the social costs of setting up such uh, social solidarity economy uh, community based forests. And examples would include provision of assistance and guidance to develop viable business plans with clear orientation towards social development priorities. Public funds can also serve as seed funds in the early stages of the business until they break even. And thereafter, the private sector could come in with loans to finance the growth. Um, it is thus important to provide evidence and increase understanding of CBFs to the traditional banking sector. Um, finally, for community forests to operate like SSE and social enterprises, they need adequate business support. However, the CSOs, civil society organizations, which commonly aid such groups, may not have the capacity to provide training on business development and services. It is therefore important to develop the capacity of local CSOs that will in turn train the groups. It is important that incubators be created on various enterprise types available and feasible within the community forest sector. This will avoid overcrowding around timber, which for the moment seems to be the most preferred activity. And so this is the problem when enterprises focus on, on, on timber and all regenerative timber, it destroys the environment um, and the uh, and integrity of the forest. And so therefore, um, need to develop a business capacity of community forest groups and they're facilitating CSOs by linking them to social enterprise, business support, institutions and training opportunities, um, governments to officially classify CFEs within the social enterprise sector. In this way, special programs can be designed to enable them to benefit from potential business support that the social enterprises need before they start making profits. Such support can include uh, startup capital, reduction of taxes, uh, often applied to conventional for-profit organizations, capacity building on skills and resources to sustainably manage such businesses, developing the private sector and reducing uh, operational cost. Yeah. So that's the um, recommendations that we have uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Kwon Onsein. Very helpful also that you have a PowerPoint presentation. So again, to summarize, you highlighted the value of allowing people to manage forest resources, and you have a list of five recommendations, namely um, recognize um, SSE community-based forestry as a mainstream economic model. Second, establish legal, regulatory, and fiscal frameworks for this protect the land rights of indigenous peoples, develop SSE CBF enterprises and provide funds and support for these. And lastly, develop the business capacity of community forestry groups and the CSOs that facilitate these. So thank you very much, Mr. On Conse. Uh, thank you. Saint Con. Yes, thank you very much. And now we will move to our fourth workshop group and that is transformative social protection. And the rapporteur for this is Mr. Ryan Raj, who is Asian Solidarity Economy Council Secretary. Yes, good evening all. And uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Nathalie, and also for all the other presenters uh, who have actually uh, done a great job, an amazing presentation, a lot of learning. And, um, and I'm the rapporteur for uh, workshop four. Uh, we had a very robust discussion, a very lively discussion, a lot of questions, uh, um, and we have about 40 uh, participants, and uh, our main speaker was, uh, we had one and only main speaker, only one, uh, managing uh, director of uh, Habitat for Humanity India, uh, Dr. Rajan Samuel, um, and uh, his main a focus was on a decent place uh, to live and um, and how not only housing um, impacts the grassroots communities but a holistic and transformative for social protection that was a very timely highlighted which was a very comprehensive uh, presentation a very comprehensive uh, a social protection that emerges 
from the housing system and how it actually empowers and builds local community and so forth. And um, he was actually, um, he started with the three key drivers, uh, which is first, of course, uh, social capital. And number two is participation of different stakeholders. And most importantly, the use of technology to connect people at the bottom, uh, information of market linkages, access to finance, uh, technology help them actually to expand business to think beyond marketing <clears throat> uh, their product, uh, beyond the lo their location and, and so forth. And uh, the use of integrated approach looking at livelihoods, uh, looking at livelihood improvement, solar energy, uh, green energy, technology, waste management, water sanitation, social enterprises, social protection and intervention. Um, and as a an holistic uh, approach, you know, that emerges from um, providing a decent place to live, but all these packages actually encompasses uh, to make them uh, to live a uh, very holistic, a very meaningful life, and also not leaving no one behind. And the other one, and he also further emphasized on uh, three phases of all these interventions and of these projects. Is, uh, the phases of intervention is prevention. Uh, first is prevention. Second is protection. And third is recovery. And, um, and, and that was his main tagline on social protection, uh, prevention, protection, and recovery. Uh, looking at shelters as final recovery program, you know, like providing them uh, a, 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 a better living ecosystem that encompasses with an holistic social protection. Looking at the multi-layered item, uh, if one, you know, if, if we want to do a sustainable social uh, protection, a multi-layered system, or even rather we can say a multi-dimensional approach. It also depends on culture, looking at the, looking at uh, one's culture, tools, social protection, a need to package all this holistically. Uh, entry into community and exit. Um, so it is also important that when you enter into one community to do your social development and so forth, and it's also important that you exit in due time and you need to have a sustainable exit plan and so forth. Uh, which also he emphasized on scalable and also having a sustainable intervention to ensure impact. And impact is measured in two key components, that is a social impact and also a financial impact. And examples like, you know, incorporating a technology, um, like what he was mentioning, an app, a Nirman app in social entrepreneurship program, and of course, building trust in a very good example that he actually highlighted the Irula tribal community, the most primitive, you know, a, a tribal community and how housing and social protection has made a, a great impact in that community. Um, and some recommendation that he also highlighted to have a high potential in public private partnership need to be clear what we want from the government in terms of land and subsidy uh, in order to get the buying in of the government, the management must be coming from the people. It is a bottom up approach once again. It is a management from the ground and, and the process is owned by the people and it's supported by them. Managing expectation between different stakeholders to make sure each take position of it. And uh, our role is to make the right connection. That means bringing in the different players the stakeholders and making the right connection at the right time. And social protection has to be tailor-made. Uh, and, and what he mentioned and emphasized, and I think even the other, the questions from the reactors, um, comments from the reactors, it also mentions and supports that no one size fits all and we need to have uh, a right tool. And finally, the commentaries you know, from uh, the reactors and from the questions, uh, we have made a summary to that. Uh, the poor need a supportive and conclusive environment to be able to maintain livelihood, a sustainable strategy to support the poor, the needy, uh, to ensure leaving no one behind. Uh, women as capable driver. This has come out very strongly uh, from uh, um, Dr. Rajan's presentation. 
and also the reactors uh, command and how women um, they are the main drivers you know of the family and also the community to bring about the change and they are the true change makers and so forth target group target segment is also very important clear roadmap for social protection program to be mindful of vulnerability of informal uh, sector employees and getting the right partner location stakeholders and partners this is a summary that we have actually uh, made um, on um, the workshop four i hope uh, we have done justice and we have covered as much as we could because of the limited time that has been allocated to us thank you very much thank you very much mr james Raj. We wish we could have attended all the workshops and it was really unfortunate that we had to select only one for every <laughs> parallel session. So thank you for, for talking about the work of Habitat for Humanity India and its holistic perspective on housing and for emphasizing how important housing is you know, for, for achievement of many goals, you know, like the social development yeah. goals. And also how you highlighted um, public part, public-private partnerships with um, government and how important it is to ensure that the beneficiaries participate in the process. So thank you very much for that. And now we will move to our fifth workshop session and that is community supported production. And the rapporteur for this session is Mr. Ryan Martinez who is program staff of the University of the Philippines Center for Integrative and Development Studies. The, particularly the program on alternative development. May we call Mr. Ryan Martinez. You have the virtual floor. Thank you, Prof. Natsi. Uh, for this presentation, I'll be sharing uh, my PowerPoint. So here. Uh, for, the, for the fifth convergence space, we have the community-supported production. So for this space, we featured uh, two models of CSP. Uh, one is the Women Self-Help Groups of ASEFA, which is the Association for Sarva Seva Farms and the fair trade experience of the juke crabs in Bangladesh. Uh, so the first presenter was Mr. Kumar uh, Loganathan of ASEFA. So he discussed how they establish village republics, uh, which are self-sufficient, self-reliant, and self-managed communities. Uh, they are in the interest of focusing on agriculture, particularly in developing their livestock through their dairy product manufacturing and retailing. In their experience, they narrated uh, that in their community, they have generated an employment of 6,580 local people, which has earned them five, uh, five point, I think this is 5 million euros in cash flows to the bill annually. So they were able to make uh, sixty percent of their milk producers producers up, uh, earn more than income fix for the below poverty line in India, and a certain percentage of their profit was allocated for social pension to the milk producers, giving them financial security to the people, as well, uh, as, well as in the unorganized sector. To their village model, they were able to establish an interrelationship with their livestock, their soil, and their agriculture, uh, which they were able to use in providing and conducting outreaches uh, to 4,455 beneficiaries. Most of them are women. And our, the second case was presented by Shah Abdul Salam from the Development Wheel, their social enterprise, uh, Jukta, which uh, is a 16 producers group in 10 districts in, in Bangladesh and has 1,200 producers, and most of them are women, rural uh, weavers. So all of their group members in their associations are skilled and trained by the national and international experts of the Jukta. Uh, organization. So from our presentation, we have also three reactors, which are Mark Rose from the New Economy Network in Australia, Rizki Estrada from the uh, KPRI in Indonesia, and Irudia Sami Pulganathan, uh, which is also from India. So from our discussion, we have uh, recommendations derived from their presentations. First, uh, this is from Kumar. 
uh, he said that we should give priority to enterprise focusing on production for local consumptions. So these are the community social uh, productions. Second is to, to have a supportive enterprise that is to create employment direct and indirect to the locals, not only for its own, but also in associated enterprises. Third is to enter such enterprises to provide social security, pension to its members like people in the or unorganized and unorganized sec sectors. The, the third recommendation, uh, the fourth recommendation <laughs> is to have financial services available to the providers, which can be used for investment and their uh, working capital. And third is to promote resource centers, institutes in the region uh, and the country, with, which can identify entities willing to take up community-based production, provide training skills development, help them in preparing feasible project proposals, arrange financial support services, and provide handholding support till takeoff. From the presentation of uh, Shah Abdus, uh, he we, they, he derived the experience from the June Crafts, which is developing programs and partnerships aimed at addressing the challenges faced by the artisans, rural women weavers. So most of them uh, have encountered challenges in low productivity, unorganized production, lack of education, traditional production methods, lack of quality raw materials, design input uh, access to finance investment, lack of market linkages, dominance of middlemen, lack of aggression, which has uh, been targeted and uh, aimed by the Jewcraft and the Development Wheel organization. Finally, from our reactors, uh, we derive this uh, recommendation and suggestion from the presentation. So first is capacitating small village production through establishment of cold storage facilities and other necessary equipments. Uh, this is from the suggestion from Mark Rose, who has uh, reminded him of the Sarbodaya Srinivasa experience in Sri Lanka. Mm, second is organizing this cottage industry and rural workers with the diaspora networks towards the development of trusteeship organization that which can be used for their marketing, logistics, and partnerships. Um, third op, the third uh, comment was from Rizki from Indonesia, and he suggested that we should revisit the relevancy of fair trade and fair price uh, in the transparency discussion in the value chain. So how are workers uh, treated, uh, treated and how they are earned, their wages, how they are priced, and et cetera, et cetera. Last is ensuring promotions and protections for e-commerce site created by local producers from the, this is from the experience and experimentations of Jewcraft as they venture with the establishment of their mobile apps and their digital economy platforms. So I think those are all the recommendations uh, from our workshop space. Thank you very much, Mr. Ryan Martinez. We appreciate the very detailed and actionable recommendations, particularly for the ILO, which we hope we can submit to the ILO after this forum. Thank you very much. And now we will move to our sixth and last workshop session reporter. And that is Ms. Maria Teresa Molino, who is project manager of Patama Bawi Effect Philippines. So Tess, if you're ready, yes, I have the virtual floor. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I want to share screen. Uh, for the workshop six on SSC financing and mutual insurance, the power the report the presenter is Miss Emily Emmy Teria F. Kihano, president of Micro Insurance MBA Association of the Philippines, CEO ASCII, uh, also the CEO ASCII Mutual Benefit uh, Association. So Ms. Emmy, uh, with our three panel reactor, it's Denise Gibran Nogueri and Mung from Australia and Munghi Marie from uh, Korea. 
and Chan Ma, Chan 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 was not able to 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 react because maybe uh, he has a problem in uh, connection. So basically, uh, Miss and we discussed about ASCII and the ten uh, strategic business units, which are the when we look at it as more on the larger ecosystem of the microfinance institutions integrated in the microinsurance. So these are the strategic partners of the ASCII in terms of implementing their uh, programs and services for the microfinance uh, clients. So if you, if you notice that there are uh, uh, different types of business, in each organization or partners, like uh, in the ASCII program, they have their credit arms and also the MBA, which is the insurance uh, house. And then the ASCII foundation is more focused on the social responsibility. And then the ASCII multipurpose cooperative in terms of um, marketing the products of the, the, the micro entrepreneurs. And then the ASCII Skills and Knowledge Institute with focusing on the capacity and capability training program. And also the ASCII Global uh, Limited in terms of financial education and basic entrepreneurship uh, for the uh, uh, migrant workers. And also uh, provides hardware and software needs of the ASCII in terms of technology. And then there is also a pre-elementary elementary education uh, provided by the ASCII School of Knowledge and ASCII Cooperative, Credit Cooperative to help improve the quality of life of its member. And also they have their travel and tour uh, agencies. So if you notice that uh, ASCII provides the ecosystems in terms of the social solidarity, how it builds its uh, partnership and networks. To build, uh, to build their uh, membership. And also these uh, ecosystems that provide how the SSC connect, market, and give service, and have an insurance for the social protection, and also in employment generation and technology uh, provisions for easy access in terms of credit and insurance gain. So the programs of ASCII, uh, it was discussed that there are four uh, main program, the business loan, agricultural loan, insurance loan, and multi-purpose loan. And uh, one is the second big program of ASCII is the mutual insurance, which provides social protection for the uh, microfinance clients. So in the presentation of Ms. Emmy, it shows that there are uh, SSE contribution to SDG, which is number, uh, SDG 1, the no property, S SG, the SDG 2, the zero hunger, SDG 4, quality education, SDG 6, clean and water sanitation, SDG 7, affordable and clean energy, SDG 8, decent work and economic growth, and SDG climate actions. And maybe it will be included soon, the SDG 11 for the housing, decent housing. So what are the recommendations from the report of Ms. Uh, EMI is that to support to, up, to scale up the digitalization initiative, reliable and fast processing of crop insurance to address the high risk financing due to natural disaster, uh, is the requirements of some government uh, financial institution to lend microfinance, more funding support to create job opportunities in the countryside, restrict the conversion of agricultural land to commercial purposes. And for the microinsurance, recommendation is to enact laws and policies in other countries to include mutual microinsurance as a social protection among the vulnerable sector. And then the exemption of the MBAs in the international financial reporting standards, uh, 17 insurance contract. With the uh, questions of the reactor, basically it's more focused on the microinsurance and the microfinance. We, the Miss Denise uh, Gibran from Australia, focus on he, her experience in terms that most of the microfinance, as he, as she knows, is more on the credit. While looking at the sharing of the ASCII, it is it has a more comprehensive 
uh, microinsurance uh, programs and services, in, in especially including integrating the microinsurance, which also address the social protection of the uh, microfinance clients. So the highlight is more on questions with regards to the legal or policy framework, integrating the microinsurance uh, in the microfinance institutions, which uh, ASCII uh, answered that uh, there is a circular or the insurance code that says that mandated to recognize that the microinsurance will integrate, uh, will be integrated in the microfinance institution. And then the second is the, um, Ms. Marie uh, uh, asked the question in terms of how the sustainability of the insurance and loan program from the different uh, or get different different project which with, which they have the ten so ten different projects with different actors and stakeholders and also the discussion uh, discuss about the digitalization operation in the organization how. Well, what are the types of digitalizations of operating in the ASCII, which the ASCII staff also shared that they have now present digital application on the ACASH and via Paria card. So they are still exploring the digital part of the microfinance and microinsurance. And then it also shared about the advocacy, how the advocacy of SSC to other microfinance institutions how SSE work in terms of integrating SSE to other microfinance institutions, especially uh, within their uh, partnership and networks. And then fifth, as the sustainability of community development project of ASCII, how is it uh, being able that the community development project of ASCII will be sustained? That they says that uh, through the LGU, collaborative partnerships and then networking with other uh, organization to to support them in their in terms of their community development project in terms of community development organizing then also miss uh Eddie discussed about uh, us about the number of staff so at present there are about 850 staff of, from ASCII from 1,000, but due to COVID-19, so it was it has affected the employment. And then, so most of the response from the uh, questions from the reactor is still uh, discussed in the PowerPoint presentation of Ms. Emmy. So this one is the strong partnership with government and private institution, develop budding and award winning and micro entrepreneurs. Boarding, onboarding of the digitalization initiatives in the lending approach, adaptive and responsive to the new normal by providing support to MSE affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and strengthen the microinsurance and saving program. And also uh, ASCII shared that they received the first sustainability certified microfinance institution in the Philippines. And lastly, I sorry. So if you look at the SSE values and principles for ASCII, as I noticed it while well, the discussion. So in terms of the five dimensional of SSE, where is ASCII? So one is the social responsible governance, which uh, helps ASCII strengthen their programs to improve the service and help members to build their enterprise through access to loan programs and insurance. In terms of edifying ethical values, the, uh, increase the capacity and capability building of the members and look others with uh, shared values and objectives. In terms of social development and social inclusions, they address the needs of the member to alleviate poverty and social protection through their mutual insurance and housing project. In their environmental measures sensitive to the environment, at present they have the solar powered water pump by water pump and biogas digester to hug racer. And the economic sustainability, the ASCII, and even the members that generate income, employment, and uh, invite investors, especially at present they have their house. So that's it for a very limited time. I hope I captured some of the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tess, for your very comprehensive synthesis.
Thank and you. summary, and also for including an analysis of how ASCII in its incredible work adheres to the five dimensions of the social yes, solidarity yes. economy. Much appreciated, Tess. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And now I turn over to Dr. Eri to introduce our next yeah. speakers. Thank you, Natalie, uh, for facilitating the, the summary from our reporters. We were mostly doing very great job here. Yeah? Uh, a lot of things we have, we have learned. I think today is like uh, we have uh, just visited the SSE course, but in, in a compact way. But however, the learning process still going on. We will listen for the next is two champions in the local and the global level. And there are Datuk Denison Jaya Surya uh, from, from Malaysia. And then the second is the uh, Mr. Sigeru Tanaka. He is a joint coordinator of the RIPES, as well the Deputy uh, Secretary General Pacific Asia Resource Centers, or PARC. But at the first, uh, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Sigeru, uh, my dear friend in the board of the RIPES, to to give your insight from the, your perspective uh, in the local advocacy as well in the global advocacy. Time is yours, please. Okay. Thank you very much, Eri, for that introduction. Um, I'm no champion. I'm still on the learning journey myself. Um, but um, based on my experience, if I can maybe just reflect on some of the things that I have heard, it would be great. So um, I did not have an opportunity to talk with a lot of the participants. I can see that there are still over 70 participants here. And so I do not know clearly where you are all feeling you are right now. So when you joined today, was it the first time you joined a ASEC event? Or was it, um, are you a veteran here? Have you been here more than myself? Um, and for those who are relatively new, um, did you have doubts about SSC? Did you do, were you questioning whether SSC can be an option for me, or were you trying to see what SSC was? And to that, I think my um, longtime co-travelers can attest that we don't think SSC is just an option we think SSE is the solution to our social ires that we have right now. And perhaps today was a good beginning to achieve um, that solution, to get to that solution, or maybe today was um, just a kind of an introductory thing. But from what I heard, for example, the case study on the Nepalese forest management. We heard testimony that pre preservation that leave communities out just doesn't work. And we were very much empowered that SSE is what is necessary. And many of the other cases reaffirmed that same conclusion. So for those who came here today for the first time, I want you to know that we have firm belief in SSE. And I think today was a good showcase of how successful SSE can be or how necessary SSE can be. Now, one thing that I have pointed out before was that we had these conferences where we shared many case studies. And I think it was in one of the previous sessions that I said that case studies might only represent points. You know, it might be a point on a map. It might be one community that is now thriving. But if we sincerely believe that SSC is a solution, then we need to infer from those case studies and see how we can normalize them, how we can make that the standard, make that the mainstream. And to that extent, I think this session today was a very um, big step forward because we made sure that in the workshops, we came up with recommendations. We made sure that the case studies don't end here, that they don't end in just the empowerment of us, the participants, but that we become agents of change 
so that this becomes the new normal. So for that, I want to congratulate the participants, the presenters, and the reactors that we are making progress in that sense. And I enjoyed hearing about the SSC course. I think it's a big step forward. Um, but if I may be kind of the pessimist in chief here, <laughs> um, offering the courses opens the doors to many people to learn about SSC. But the people who will enter the course are those who already have an interest in SSC. But if we are to really normalize SSC, then we must be the noisy aunt in the family. I think many families have that noisy aunt who comes at you and says, oh, you have to do this, this, and this. Be picky about things. Be pushy about things. So from here on, we know that SSC works. We are confident. And we want to make more opportunities for people who learn about SSC to learn, but we also need to be more pushy. We need to be pushy and go to the people who are still doubting SSC, who are still questioning SSC, and go to them and say, hey, why don't you look at this? And confront them and be in uncomfortable situations ourselves within the family, within the communities, to try to spread the word. And I think today, and what we are moving forward in, in these sessions, are good steps forward. And I am really happy to see all the faces and the huge list of attendees. And we will all be noisy aunts and uncles from here on. Now, one other thing that um, I would like to point out is that, especially for the veterans here, um, and the repeaters, that we want to really um, understand that we are growing as a family of SSC in Asia and globally. Now that means we are inviting and welcoming more and more new faces. Those faces, those people who do not share the experience yet that we have had accumulated at ASEC. Right? So these are people who do not necessarily share the language or the culture, but we still need to welcome those people. And for that, there are some um, language issues that I might want to point out. And it's kind of a critical analysis on myself as well, because I always use those languages as well. Now, for example, let me say enterprises. See, we in the SSC community in ASEC, we don't necessarily mean that when we say enterprises, we're not, we know that we are not talking about the blood sucking capitalist model of enterprises, but the word enterprise itself does not hold the connotation that it's SSC based. Now, do we always want to see SSC based enterprises or do we just want to say enterprises? Or do we want to emphasize also cooperatives? Do we want to say enterprises and cooperatives or just cooperatives? So by, for example, using more terms like cooperatives, I'm not saying that cooperatives are the solution, but it does show our position that we value democratic operations in the enterprise. Or do we want to have investments? And when we say investments, those who are new to us might not see the difference between when we say investment or the Wall Street investors. But what if we say, for example, we, are, we need more financial cooperation or we need financial collaborators instead of we want investors. For the new people, that gets, sends a message. We are not seeking Wall Street investors who are trying to make money out of SSC enterprises, right? So when we are conscious about the fact that we are welcoming more and more new people, we should also be conscious about how we elaborate our work because we are doing excellent work and we don't want to be misunderstood. And so I'm still developing how best to communicate. And I think we all are because SSC is old but new, and it's not always um, understood 
by people. And I think there was that point also made in one of the workshops as well. So let's be conscious about that, all of us, and try to develop our own language that differentiates between the capitalists and the Wall Street investors and really strikes the message at the heart of what we think is important at SSC. I'll do my best and let's all um, work together on that. Thank you very much and congratulations to everyone. Thank you very much, Shigeru. You make us like a, like a homework to think, yeah? <laughs> No, today is, uh, we have a lot of uh, thinking and feel like, uh, as you said, that a lot of um, showcases that make us happy, oh, we have already there, but you open the eyes that uh, sting long journey, either, either by wording and terminology, we have to be more carefully, because we have not only targeted to the people who has already known the SSE, but for those who are still dubbed on the SSE. How, how, how? We should have more convergences uh, uh, for the SSE. Okay, thank you, however. This was really great, uh, inspiring, and then uh, opening the, the mind that we are still long journey to, to mainstreaming. Now I would like to invite uh, uh, Denison Jayasurya. He is my tutor as well from Malaysia. So uh, okay, okay, yeah. So uh, just a little bit. I have to introduce you short. Denison is uh, is uh, part of our family here in the ESEC. Uh, he is now the head of secretariat. All Party Parliamentary Group on SDGs. So the title is very strong, and it, it seems that he works for the SDGs. That means try to bring as well SSE in the SDGs in Malaysia, uh, as well the co-founder of the ESEC. So, Denison, time is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ari, and thank you to the ESEC family for this opportunity. I'd like to greet uh, Dr. Ben Cunyones and, of course, our pa Bambang, whom I see um, in, in the participants. Um, it's, it's great to uh, participate and hear. Uh, earlier, I was uh, in a car, so uh, it was difficult, but I, I managed to reach my destination on time to at least be part of two of the six working groups. I heard some on the community forestry, but I managed to hear all on social protection. Mm -hmm. I think it's very impressive and I must congratulate uh, Dr. Eri Chandra, Dr. Ben, the ESSEC team uh, that has identified a cross section of people uh, from Asia, mostly our partners, uh, but I see the level and depth of discussion um, much more rigorous, and that is uh, progression, uh, not just of thought, but also in practice uh, and the credibility of the model uh, from the ground uh, is quite significant. So I want to thank and congratulate the ESSEC team. I know this is being recorded and it can be shared and I hope some kind of write-up uh, will come out. Secondly, I think uh, it was very significant that ASEC uh, invited ILO, and especially to have WIC, uh, who is the head of the UN task force uh, on SSE. Um, and, and I think that's very significant uh, because the UN task force uh, with the leadership of ILO and also UNRIS, um, uh, the UN Research Institute, um, as well as the 17 uh, UN agencies that have given visibility uh, to the SSE uh, as a means of implementation uh, of the Sustainable Development Goals is quite significant. I think the ILO resolution, um, how the cooperative movements 
at a policy level, uh, underwriting it, ILO's uh, commitment to the country studies that Dr. Ben, Dr. Eri and I were part of, uh, and a new set of country studies ILO is sponsoring uh, to give policy and academic recognition to SSE um, at the international, uh, linking it to decent work and moving the informal sector to greater formality uh, in its uh, um, uh, outward. I think one major output of the UN task force is the encyclopedia on SSE. I think definitions, conceptual um, concepts, ideas, and so forth. And I think they are thinking of, and this is where ESSEC could work with the UN task force to bring something from an Asian perspective, because of the rich uh, exposure and data that we have, um, and the kind of people uh, that we have in Asia. Uh, but ILO has uh, given great visibility um, at the United Nations, both at New York, uh, as well as Geneva. And I think it might be important for us to influence ILO at Asia Pacific uh, to give greater visibility. And one possibility might be an ILO or UN task force uh, sponsorship of a conference along, along with ESSEC and other Asian partners uh, at an Asia Pacific level uh, so that uh, SSE as a means of implementation of SDGs might surface. Now, the UN next year is hosting uh, the SDG Summit in September. They are calling groups to review the last seven years and see what are the strategies for the next eight years uh, to reach 2030. And we could push SSE as a key uh, means of implementation to achieve the targets, especially in ensuring people, uh, prosperity, planet, uh, peace, partnership, which is at the core of the SDGs and similar to good governance, ethical values, uh, economic, social, environmental concern, con um, concerns of the SSE. Now, uh, fourthly, I think thirdly or fourthly, I have lost track how many points already. I think the reports were extremely good. Um, the one on training, co uh, community forestry, social protection, insurance, ILO resolution, I think all were very significant. And I think Ben has been pushing us to do this. And maybe ESSEC should seriously um, bring out with greater visibility because I'm just hearing the reports, Habitat India, Esafa India, Eski Philippines, the community forestry of Nepal, uh, the work that Bola and others have put together uh, in Nepal. All this is well documented uh, with a lot of other write-ups actually gives very sound documentary evidence. So the case studies uh, linking it uh, to the thematic areas might be something that you might want to consider. I know time, most of us have been on the web for a long while. My final point is where I am involved with now, impacting national policies. And I think countries like uh, Korea in our region, I think the Philippines as well, uh, more recently Malaysia on the social enterprise, national policy funding, accreditation of social enterprises, uh, linking it with cooperatives or other organizations is a major recognition. And at the REPES site event at the HIL, uh, HLPF, uh, this year, Malaysia um, uh, government was represented from the cooperative ministry. But I think having a stronger 
national advocacy and engaging with parliamentarians is something that is important. There is a group called the Inter, uh, Inter, uh, International Parliamentarian Forum or something. They host annually at um, the UN during the HLPF. We know of the ASEAN Par Parliamentary uh, Forum. We know of parliamentarians at the national level. And this is basically to change the development uh, discourse and agenda. Uh, and ensuring uh, that uh, social economy uh, or social uh, enterprise, community-based initiatives are given greater recognition um, as part of the national strategy to address not just poverty, uh, but uh, really economic upliftment um, for people, uh, not just at the bottom, uh, but also to ensure, and I think we all know in the work we have done that the COVID period has highlighted this. I, I think that might be a, a great forum. I think Ben and others have done that in the ASEAN uh, People's Forum, but I think more to engage with national parliaments and then to present our findings so that member states uh, in the Asia-Pacific area will begin to switch. I know Shigeru raised much more conceptual overviews and we will constantly challenge with that. But friends, these are some of my thoughts. Uh, we have had long discussions, great work. Uh, keep it up uh, and congrats once again to Dr. Eri, Dr. Ben, uh, Chandra, the whole team uh, of people. They all sound very dynamic, and it's great to see James uh, and Onsen playing a very active role with me going to the background. Thank you, and back to you, Dr. Eri. Thank you very much, Denison. Um, you at the new point that we haven't discussed till the, uh, the beginning, that means the advocacy of SSC not only to the, to the government, to the civil society, to the private sector, but as well to the parliamentary groups. Yeah, okay. This is, uh, again, the new challenge for us. Uh, thank you, you will be here and encourage us with the new things that we have to do for making the, the SSE as a mainstream of economy. Okay, now uh, I give it my turn back to the Natalie. Yes, so we are coming to our closing session, which is just going to last for 10 minutes. And for our summary and recommendations, I would like again to introduce Dr. Eri Tinurini, who is currently the chair of ASEC and also a board member of the RIPES Global Network. Dr. Eri, please, for your summary and recommendations. Okay, thank you, Natalie. Dear uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues and friends, uh, because the background of this event today, not only to strengthen the networking of the SSE networks in the country, as well to bring more collaborations among us, but as well, actually, we, we would like to to use the opportunity to, to convey our recommendations to our strategic uh partners, institutions, that means the ILO, which uh, part of the follow-up of the ILC in July would like to bring uh, the strategic action plan with the governing bodies. So it's not so easy to summarize most of the important points here, but I would like just to summarize not uh, only all uh, sector by sector, but more in general. Okay. ASEC Convergence Spaces attended by country SSE networks has been convinced us that the SSE practices in Asia has shown the innovative solutions to provide decent work and meet the needs of the disadvantaged groups and persons in vulnerable situations, particularly women, including in the rural areas. The SSE practices has an integrated gender responsive approach including with respect to vulnerable groups 
and recognizing the value of care and unpaid work along the process. By practicing the SSE principles, the SSE initiatives in all sector concretely contributed to decent work solutions for the climate change and SDGs. To meet the challenges and to make the SSE work in all countries, here is some insight from the ASEF Convergence Spaces 2022 that can be taken also by uh, as a recommendation to the ILO governing body. First, the SSE capacity building in the formal and informal ways are very important to raise the awareness and to strengthen the governance of the SSE organizations so that the SSE is a possible solution for the fairer development and climate change. The second, to strengthen the SSE country network as a resource center in order to play a strategic role as a SSE capacity builder for many aspects such as developing the SSE ecosystem, become a catalysator for supply chain among the SSE entities, as well as advocacy to the government on the SSE policy enabling framework. The third, to promote and develop the capacity of the SSE enterprises or initiatives by providing the ecosystem, including the financial services with the SSE platform to provide credit under the priority basis for investment and working capital as well as access to the technology. The fourth, recognize SSE community-based forestry as a mainstream economy model and tools to promote rural development and sustainable environment combats the climate change and sustainable livelihood, and enabling a fiscal incentive to develop the SSE community-based forestry enterprises uh, to, provide, to, to provide protections of the indigenous group of their uh, land rights. So I put the, the point four just to, uh, to strengthen that, that the indigenous people are part of our concern in the SSE. And the five, uh, this is the last, that public basic needs and social protections for the most vulnerable groups as a precondition for them to involve in the SSE enterprises and to reduce the uh, business risks uh, faced by the vulnerable groups. So these are at least the five points that I can rapidly uh, try to concise from the two-day discussions. Uh, Thank you. I give it back to uh, Natalie. Thank you very much, Dr. Eri, for crafting those very concise recommendations, which I think essentially cover most of the areas that were already discussed earlier. So thank you. And now we come to our closing remarks. And I would like to introduce to everyone, Mr. Bambang Ismawan, who is the founder and chair of Bina Swadaya Foundation, Indonesia and who is also co-founder of ASEP. So, Mr. Bambang, you have the virtual floor. Thank you. Good afternoon and good evening. Uh, yes, Bina Swadaya means Bina is over evolve and Swadaya is self-reliance. I've been involved with this organization for, well, I was students. It was almost 60 years ago. That's why I'm uh, people saying that Bambang Ismawan is Binaswadaya. But Binaswadaya is not Bambang Ismawan because Binaswadaya is very much uh, bigger and uh, developed. So I, in this uh, very uh, encouraging uh, meetings, I feel that uh, it is very important to uh, emphasize what has been several times mentioned. Our uh, togetherness is a kind of networking and uh, the try to cooperation. So what would, as a closing uh, with this statement, I would like to say that let's oper operationalize what we have been, uh, uh, what is, uh, con uh, gathering uh, so many uh, informations uh, from many different uh, 
uh, participants. Uh, so operationalizations of the uh, uh, what we have been talking in our networking, it is now becoming a very essential uh, activities. Cooperation among uh, different uh, organizations is very vital. It is based also our experiences. Pinaswadaya as social entrepreneurship is promoting uh, poverty alleviation, uh, social development and social uh, and um, uh, productive uh, environment. As social development, women as a poverty alleviation, productive employment and social integration. And for the uh, poverty alleviations, we always uh, promote uh, a local organization, self-help group, community-based cooperative. And uh, when we work by ourselves, after 40 years, we only collect about uh, 3,000 self-help groups. But when we are conducting cooperation with government institutions, private organizations and also um, uh, philanthropic organizations, within 20 years, we are promoting 1 million self-help groups of about 25 million family members. So how important is the uh, operationalization of the cooperation? We are working in the field of uh, women participation in development. Uh, forest, uh, social forestation, linking bank and self-help groups. And we are promoting uh, peace uh, by formalizing self-help group in the area of conflict. So all of these things, make our Spina Swada is very concerned that uh, cooperation among us is so important. Now I'm so happy that uh, during this conference, almost five hours we yeah, are together, is some talking about what we are going to do and what kind of cooperation are needed. So now is the time for the board of ASEC to operationalize uh, the different uh, what is experiences and different institutions uh, in our forum and asset. This is a short uh, remark from myself as a, a member of ASEC and uh, hope everything fine and conversation for everybody. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Bambang Ismawan. Uh, Dr. Eri, there is an addition, no recommendation for the ILO from Dr. Rosalinda Ofrenero. It's mm -hmm. that the ILO support education yeah. and training and other awareness raising activities sure. at the local, national, and regional yeah. levels. Let us, let's yeah. include that in our list. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. So with that, we would like to thank all our speakers, our moderators, our rapporteurs, our reactors, and all the participants for joining us in ASEF 2022. We hope that moving forward, we will all be very strong, passionate, committed SSE community builders. I turn over to Dr. Eri Trinorini. We actually both tandem doing the moderator. <laughs> okay, this is the end. Uh, thank you very much for how many hours we are sitting together. Four hours, I think, yeah. So I hope you are fine. You are not exhausted, yeah. So again, uh, a lot of things you have uh, you have been learned. And then a lot of, uh, I would like to thank as well for everyone who participate in this in this in this um, convergence spaces for the for the for the moderator for ourselves and then for for the for the speaker and then for the uh, reporter and then for Chandra behind the screen and then uh, who's else uh, for the reactors from so many uh, 
from other continents. This is really wonderful. And then I heard as well directly in the presentations, a lot of people offering the things that they can do for promoting or encouraging the mainstreaming of the SSE. This is real, the real solidarity is already there. Okay, not, not many words more. I would like to thank you again for uh, all of you. Keep healthy and happy. Let's we do continue the practicing of the SSE values because it is a solution and as well it is possible to mainstreaming it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We made good time. It's only 5.7. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> With a Bye. very full packed schedule. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank, you. Thank, you Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Dr. Eri. Thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Ben. See you again soon. Yeah. Thank you, Chandra, for helping me.